Welcome to Altium Designer Getting Started. In this module, we will compile the design that we've been working on. Let's review the design schematics. Here we see there are two schematic sheets. The first one we copied into this project, and it contains the I.O. connector for a Raspberry Pi single board computer. The second schematic, called the expansion board, has the logic needed to provide a CAN bus interface for the Raspberry Pi. To compile the design, right-click on the project file and select Compile PCB Expansion Board Project. Once compiled, you will see the message window opens up. This indicates that there were ERC errors found during the compile. If there were only warnings, then the message window would not have opened. It's always a good idea, however, to review all the warnings as well as address errors before starting the PCB layout process. Expanding the message panel so we can see the various panes, we find there are errors and warnings. To sort them, click on the Class tab. Now we can see the various messages grouped, errors and warnings. Clicking on the first error listed, we jump to the schematics where the error was found. We can see that this is an input pin that is not being actively driven. The MCP2515 has a few input pins that we do not need to use, and will instruct Altium Designer to ignore this error on each of these pins. This is done in Altium using directives, in this case, the No ERC Directive for Undriven Inputs. Right-click on the error listing in the message window and select Place Specific No ERC for this violation. This puts a cross on the mouse that you can place on the pin, like so. Now this will not generate an error in future compiles. We would do the same for the remaining two input pins that are floating, either by using the right-click on the error listing, or in this case, just copy and paste the same no ERC directive onto the other pins. Now, recompiling, we can see that the errors are gone. Looking very close to the pins, we can see a faint group of white dots. These represent the electrical hotspot or the location for connecting to the pin with a wire. There are a number of warnings that we should look into for insight. The two types that we see listed here that should be mentioned are no driving source and unconnected pins. Clicking on one of the no driving source warnings, we jump to the schematic and we can see that the CAN RXD net connects between an input pin and to the junction of two resistors. The resistors are modeled as a non-active driving component, so Altium does not see any driver on this net. We can add a specific no ERC directive for these warnings, if we want to clean them up. Likewise, the three input pins that we added the no specific ERC directive are also complaining about no driving source now. To fully eliminate these warnings, we will add a full generic no ERC directive to each of these pins, instead of these specific types we've been using. To do so, go to the Place pull-down menu, click on Directives, and then Generic No ERC. And we can place them on each of those three pins. Now, recompiling, we can see these warnings are cleared up. We do see one warning about a net having multiple net names. This is okay as the ports and the net label do not match, but are still electrically connected. At this point, we've checked the design for basic electrical rules. These electrical rules are defined for the project specifically, and they can be found by right-clicking on the project file and selecting Project Options. This opens up a new window with multiple tabs. The two we are concerned with here are the Error Reporting and Connection Matrix tabs. Looking at the error reporting, we see a listing of various types of violations, and to the right of each is the current setting reported if it's found during the ERC run. There are numerous levels, from fatal error to no report. To change the level reported, click on the Report Mode entry and pick the new level. Please change these carefully, as the defaults were developed over time based on PCB failures. To reset them, in case you've modified a few and want to get back to the defaults, just click on the Set to Installation Defaults button and then click OK to accept the changes. The next tab is the Connection Matrix tab and it shows the various combinations and level reported for each. This is used for pins and ports, whereas the Error Reporting tab was net-centric. Changing the level is done by clicking on the block changing its color. Closing this window and returning to the schematics, we have one more check to perform. Before sending the design to the PCB, we need to check to ensure that each of the components have a footprint that the tool can find. This is normally a precautionary check. With correct library components, it should not be an issue. Using the tool's pull-down menu, select Footprint Manager. The new window has a few panes. 
The leftmost pane has a full listing of all the parts in the design. Select all of them starting at the top and then scrolling down to the bottom. Hold the shift key down and click the bottom entry. This puts all of the selected parts footprints into the rightmost pane. Selecting all of them, we now click on the validate button to ensure that they have footprints that can be found and therefore be used on the PCB. Now with all the footprints validated, we are ready to send the design to the PCB. In our next module, we will perform the transfer.